So I've been building a, a Joel White designed Poo Duck Skiff. I'm here in my little workshop. Not tremendously spacious, so uh, unfortunately I can't give you a long view of the boat, but so far the planking is complete. The skeg and the uh, false keel are on, as is the stem. Now I'm in the process of coating the uh, the exterior of the fiber of the hull, sorry, with uh, with epoxy. And so what I do is I, uh, in order to give um, abrasion resistance as well as to protect the plywood from water, with the boat. Uh, was sitting in the water for any long period of time, is I, I fiberglass the actual bottom and the garboard strake of the boat with epoxy uh, and fiber, six ounce fiberglass cloth. Uh, I also included a, uh, a, a sort of, um, before applying the cloth over the whole bottom, a four inch uh, run of fiberglass tape with epoxy, which was then ground and fared. And then I covered the whole with fiberglass cloth. So I feel that gives it pretty good abrasion resistance. There's yet going to be a half inch uh, bronze um, rubbing strake that's going to be screwed to the uh, to the bottom and run up the uh, the outer stem. Uh, but right now my focus is on epoxying the uh, the two upper planks, the shear plank and the uh, oh, I forget what the intermediate plank is called. Um, so that, you know, the plywood has a good um, uh, long-term resistance protection against uh, uh, kind of uh, checking uh, from sitting in the sun or even from, from problems with water issues. The inside of the hull, once the outside is, is completed and primed, I will be flipping the hull over. And on the inside, I will also be clothing the, uh, the bottom with fiberglass cloth and epoxy, um, you know, so that you have uh, some protection against dropping things like anchors and so on and so forth. And I will be coating uh, liberal amounts of epoxy, of unthickened epoxy, on the inside of the strakes, just like on the outside. So today, what I thought I would do is I would give you a, a little demonstration of <laughs> what I'll call a little shop tip. So I've built a lot of boats over the years like this. And um, one of the problems I frequently encounter when I'm applying epoxy to the outside of plywood, I use uh, West System epoxy, um, is that no matter how you do it, whether you brush it on, whether you roll it on with a foam brush uh, and then tip it, uh, no matter how diligent you are in trying to spread it thin, it's really, really hard to avoid getting sags and runs. And, and sometimes even like orange uh, peeling, you know, where the, 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 the application is, is really kind of spotty and, and, and not uniform thickness. You often get brush marks, even with the, uh, the foam, I find that you get, you get brush marks when you come and tip it afterwards. It's really, really hard to get a good smooth finish. And the thing is, when you're just putting raw epoxy, or sorry, epoxy on top of raw plywood, um, you don't want to have to be doing too much sanding to get a perfectly fair and smooth surface for subsequent painting because you've got the danger of sanding right through the uh, the epoxy coat that you've just put on and right into the plywood and then you're back to square one. So I'm going to show you a technique that I've uh, that I use uh, after <laughs> trying with every possible uh, approach and not having very good success and how I get uh, a very smooth finish and I hope you can appreciate in this light that um, uh, the two upper strakes, which I'm working on now, are very, very smooth. It's almost like a glistening varnish type of finish on, uh, on both port and starboard. Same thing on this side here. And the way that I, get the, that I achieve this is by spreading, instead of using foam rollers and brushes, I use a, uh, essentially from an automotive shop, a little uh, squeegee. That, that's used for spreading bondo and things like that. And um, what I do is I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make myself a little bit of a container with epoxy, and then I just kind of dip my edge in, get a very thin amount, and I squeegee it on the hull. And I'll do a little demonstration of that. This has the advantage of not only giving you a very smooth application without brush marks or anything like that, but it also allows you to put very thin coats on, which is really ideal because it's better to have multiple thin coats and build them up than one goopy coat, which is going to be a mess and you're going to end up sanding 80% of it off anyway. The other thing that this does is it really economizes on the use of, of epoxy. It takes very, very little epoxy to spread it. So what you see here is the first coat that I applied earlier this morning, about uh, three hours ago, and I'm ready to um, green in the next coat. 
uh, for the purpose of this demonstration. And because the first coat is still green, it's still tacky, it remains so for several hours after application, and that's even with the West System Fast Hardener, uh, you, can, you can just go ahead and apply a second coat directly on top and it will chemically bond to the epoxy. So you're good to go to have a good, stable, well-adhered second coat. If I had allowed it to cure uh, for much longer, uh, let's say, you know, six hours or even overnight, then you've missed your opportunity to green in a second coat and you're, what you really have to do then is just sand the hull to kind of give it a tooth so that your second coat has something to mechanically uh, hold on to uh, and, and to create a stable uh, coat that way. So I'm going to set myself up and I'll show you momentarily how I do the application with the squeegee. All right, so uh, here I am. I've got my lab coat on to kind of protect my uh, my good clothes from from epoxy. So I've got this little tray. So I just mixed up a batch of uh, West System with some fast uh, hardener. And so my technique consists of simply taking this uh, this little uh, body shop uh, uh, spreader squeegee and I just wet, I just wet out the tip and then you come to your surface and what's nice about this is it, 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 it kind of is self lubricating so it, it really glides along quite nicely and you just spread your coat, spread it thinly, look at it from an angle and the key though is to spread it really really thinly. You want a nice thin coat, you don't want anything goopy, you don't want sags or runs, sometimes they're unavoidable but I do my best to just kind of get everything spread out and then I just work my way down along the streak and I do one streak at a time. It's very very thin, you see I'm, I'm really squeezing to spread a very very thin layer. And that's the key to getting an almost mirror smooth finish. It'll still need some sanding, but the beauty of this is that once it's cured, I can just sand it with, um, with 320 grit paper, which is nice. Another advantage is that unlike tipping, you know, we often use those disposable chip brushes to do our tipping because, well, because usually any brush that you dip in epoxy is going to be ruined and be hard to clean. Um, and the problem with a lot of those cheap brushes with the pig bristle is you tend to get little bristles in your paint. No matter how careful you are to pluck all the loose ones out, and even if you tape, uh, you know, put a piece of tape wrapped around the lower par portion of the bristles in order to kind of keep everything together, it's really, really hard. See, I see a drip there. So I just drag it forward and spread it thin. And you're building a lot of nice thin coats of epoxy. When I sand it, I'm not going to be sanding away hundreds of dollars of epoxy. And the more coats you put on, the easier they are because the more, um, the more easily the squeegee glides. It's a smooth surface, so you end up having very little friction. So it goes on quite nicely. So that's my uh, that's my shot tip. That's how I get a mirror finish for uh, epoxy coating plywood. There we go. We'll let that cure. 